Yeah, right. So why why bayonet? Right? It's uh, it's not eighteen twelve anymore. I know. It makes us sad. Me too. Um, but it, it's it's uh, it's an antiquated, obsolete uh, weapon system. And you know that's true because any statistician will tell you that. Sure, sure. There was an American platoon that used you know, the bayonet in Iraq here recently, you know, not that many years ago. There was a bayonet charge in Iraq by another British infantry platoon. There was a bayonet you know, incident there in Afghanistan by yet another Commonwealth uh, platoon. So these happen, but they're the anomaly, and so we all know that, uh, you know, what any stat statistician will tell you. Well, there's just not that many people killed on the battlefield or wounded by bayonets and so rightfully they've gone the way of the dodo. Here's my question about that. My question is how many people in those same battles and since 1812, <clears throat> how many of them were killed by radiological poisoning? And I ask that because are we ready to say that because there's not many people wounded or killed by radiological poisoning that we are going to call nuclear weapons obsolete and just get rid of all of them. No sense in training them, no sense not with them, no sense in having them. Let's get them out of our inventory because clearly they're not killing that many people. So they're not very effective, right? Or, or they're very effective. They're so darn effective that any time a conflict escalates to the point where we're going to look at using nuclear war, everybody says, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's draw this down. Let's de-escalate the conflict so that we don't use these weapons because they're incredibly, remarkably effective. Well, okay, so let me play devil's advocate and say that's what bayonets are. The reason the Civil War didn't see many wounds and deaths by bayonet was the same reason they don't today. Because as soon as you lock bayonet, the enemy, if the situation is right, you lock bayonet, the platoon or company moves forward, the enemy doesn't want any piece of that. They realize it's just got to a serious level that I no longer want to engage and I'm going to fall off this piece of terrain and let them have it. I think it's, that's probably the more realistic explanation of uh, the impact of the bayonet on the modern day battlefield. Is that it's so remarkably effective that when you see a line of fierce warriors coming to you, locked bayonet cold steel, you conclude that you have something else to do somewhere else. And so I think it's still a very critical, valuable skill, even in the battle space. Is it niche? Of course it is. So are UAVs. We still use them. So I think we, as warriors, we need to learn the bayonet. And that's why One Shepherd chooses to continue to teach uh, the bayonet. Uh, we do every semester. Uh, well, that's not entirely true. Some semesters we alternate to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, uh, but we do teach uh, half of our mornings are spent doing bayonet drill, footwork, blade work, you know, putting it together as combinations and even doing some light competition with the pugil. Um, and I, again, I think it has a very practical battlefield uh, impact um, and significance. Beyond that, it's a wonderful, wonderful tool to stay in shape. It's a great tool to teach teamwork and camaraderie. And I think it is something transformational, um, psychological, and even in uh, the warrior ethos about saying you should be able to fight from zero to 500 meters as a rifleman. And zero is hand-to-hand -hand and the bayonet. It's fiercely intimate, and you should know this. I think it builds not just the esprit de corps of the unit, but the confidence of the warrior. Um, and, and so that's why we choose to keep that tradition alive. Um, it's not just all touchy-feely. I think it really does have an impact on the battle space.